Good luck. All right, this marks game two of the All-American Summer Shogi Finals. Um, given how things have gone recently, um, just our absolute pummeling playing third Fall Rook, we're going to do something different today. So, yeah. I don't really care. about the consequences of whatever he does with his static rook, if he's doing that. Um, we are going to play central fall rook, come hell or high water, and we are going to enjoy it. That's our plan. So, yeah. Sorry for the brief delay in match time with this opponent. I was trouble shooting some internet problems. Uh, we don't need to belabor the point right now. But um, I took every effort I could to try to play the match on time. But this was not in my control, alas. Um, so... We open our bishop, we open our rook. Our gold probably doesn't belong where it's at. Um, so I could have feigned Anaguma. I have no interest in it. So we're going to duck back this way. And yeah, they prevent us from advancing the center pawn. And I stubbornly refuse to admit that they're preventing that. Um, so we ask them to declare their intentions over here. Likewise, give our bishop somewhere to go over here. And then we bring our silver toward the center. In an ideal world, the silver would have advanced a bit further already, um, but it's fine. So I left an interesting quandary here. What happens if my silver doesn't block my rook? What if I use the silver to oppose this and try to like move my bishop out this other way? Because clearly they've established that I'm not going to get this pawn moved anytime soon. So, um, it's an interesting situation. Yeah, I think my silver can repel this easily enough. Since they put all of their effort into stopping me from pushing the center pawn forward. I can spend my resources a little bit differently than normal. So this knight is not moving anywhere. Right. Um, so let's activate this bishop. and not be so constrained by having to keep the bishop uh, attacking on this diagonal that is blocked by three pieces now. Um, when we can hit somewhere else. Let's get our king off of this diagonal which was a bit of a risky diagonal for the king. And yeah, we might exchange on the third file just like we did in the previous Summer Shogi tournament. I'm sorry, in the tourney to master game. We did this exchange on this file. Um, it's one possibility.
I think even if I don't exchange on this file, this move makes some sense. So I could either tuck the bishop in behind this pawn or move the knight up or do other things. Oh, this is where they're putting their king. Interesting. That makes some sense. I could see why they'd have some interest in doing that. All right, we'll point our bishop at the king. Sure. Is this really where you want to set your king up? <laughs> it's possible Alexei might be covering this too, which could be exciting. Uh, yeah, so I half expected this. I thought it was a bit risky, but like every move bears some risk. Um... This was my intended response to it. Um, yeah, no, I think this is the strongest possible response. It's very flexible. Meanwhile, uh, I want to attack the head of their knight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one might inquire what I'm doing about that. Um, I had a couple ideas. Well, first of all, this bishop move is a bit odd. This is super aggressive, man. What the hell? <laughs> what are you doing? Seriously. Ah. I don't understand it. Um... Okay. So we're just going to try to remain calm while they ratchet up this tension, but um yeah, I don't know that I would do this if I were in their position. Just because they're attacking doesn't mean I have to roll over and take it. Mm -hmm. So should we get a pawn in hand? I mean, this allows them to bishop drop behind, and I think it's fine. Even if I don't have somewhere I can immediately drop my own bishop, I think it's fine for me to allow them to drop theirs. Um, 
Also, I might want to exchange my rook for... Well, no. Ah, <sighs> so... So, so. Um... I mean, worst case, I bring this gold up to deal with some of these bishop drop threats. It seems to nullify all of them. Um, yeah, it makes my castle quite vulnerable. Oh, I could bring the gold over one. That is far, far safer way of dealing with bishop drop threats than... Just willy-nilly allowing it. Uh, well, no, then they can drop here in exchange for my rook. Because, well, no, then my rook can retreat all the way back. Everything's barely covered. But, you know, it's good enough. So, yeah. In the event that a bishop drop here happens, I could retreat the rook back to 5-9, uh, five, or 5-1, five, um, and that protects the knight. This makes it very attractive for me to have a bishop because I could drop it right here and hit the knight and nothing can defend the knight. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, full speed ahead. Let's see where this goes. This is not the safest position for me ever. But there's nothing I can do to make it more solid. I'm banking on the speed of my attack. And the vulnerability of them having moved both of their knights forward. So that creates two targets that I can aim at. Even though they have silvers covering the knight's heads, but like they have played a very bold attack and I'm just not having it. It's not to say that their attack idea is bad. It's just that, like, I can't just allow this to go on forever. So, I'm going to say enough is enough and start exchanging some pieces and see where we end up. And hopefully it'll be fine. As long as I keep my pieces active.
That is concerning. My original plan had been um, that we we're going to exchange here. And after the exchange, um, that'll simplify things a bit. But now if pawn takes, bishop takes, silver up, so bishop takes, silver takes rook, bishop takes knight, it's still doable. It's just not my first preference. Um, but yeah, they're clearly indicating they want to bring the rook behind this attack. I don't know that I could change that. If I take here right away, their silver takes, then my rook retreats. And they hit my bishop's head, and we cry. Um, can we do better? I don't know. So, if I bring my bishop forward, I threaten to take the silver. They could defend this with the rook. I could exchange. Rook takes. Silver drop hitting this point, which is indefensible. Um, and while I can harass their pieces on this corner of the board, that doesn't further an attack on my part. Um... Hmm. <laughs> I have a fun concept. I have a fun concept. Which is a bit insane. But that's never stopped me before. I would like a rook exchange. How much am I willing to sacrifice to get my rook exchange? The problem is that without a pawn in hand, I can't force all three of these pawns to sacrifice and allow my silver in. This knight is not defended. Um, but yeah, this might come soon in any event. I might need to use the silver to defend this. That might be the best use of my tempo. Yeah, what's not great about this is that the silver is the only piece defending this square. So if the silver moves up, then they could drop a bishop behind and attack my rook. So that's not great.
So they've given me one tempo to reconnect my castle. Um, what's the best way to reconnect it? Yeah, we're going to move our gold and silver back together. Now this rook is a target. Well, I'm sorry, my bishop ends up sacking for this, the rook moves. But otherwise, if I had a silver in hand, it could go right there quite nicely. But I don't have one. And there's not a way that I can get a silver in hand while the rook is still here. A bishop, maybe, but not a silver. It's, I can't get a silver in hand this way. I'm still concerned that nothing defends this knight, and the knight can't move easily. That's kind of incredible, um, in the sense that I just don't believe it. How do I even burn a tempo here? Like, if I were trying to use up a tempo, and I don't know. How would I use it? Because I want to move the bishop out, but now is not the correct time to do it. Well, I've got ideas. They're not good, but I have ideas. <sighs> Rather, the ideas lose my knight. That doesn't and my lance, which doesn't mean they're bad. It just means it's a heavy loss. Um, hmm. Well, this could be interesting. This, um, as long as I don't lose the silver outright, this could be interesting. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, pushing this pawn gets me in too much trouble. I mean, everything leads to trouble here, so what do I care? They don't have a pawn in hand. They could get one. Screw it. This is the sort of thing I want to do. The timing might be wrong, but, like, this is the correct side of the board to attack on. I was just debating which of these pawns to move first. But yeah, I want to start this attack against their king sooner rather than later. I need something to aim at. So this lance move seems a bit gratuitous. The other thing is I did debate moving this pawn up and trying to, like, force this rank to be cleared of pawns. But that doesn't seem to get too far. I spent a lot of energy trying to prevent a bishop drop, but a uh, bishop drop could be inevitable. I shouldn't forever fear it. So if I can profit from opening things up here, I should. And I think I can. My silver is attacked. Which pieces would I like to exchange today? Um, hmm. The timing of this is surprising. Silver up, bishop takes, silver takes, bishop takes, they take here. Okay, that's not great. So, uh, I don't want to offer my rook. Um, I don't have a choice. Rather, no. Um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, my rook is stuck anyway, but yeah, they profit from this exchange. I'm not happy about it. If I do exchange, if I don't, I still get attacked. So, um, I think it's okay. It's spooky, but I think it's fine. What's spooky about this is that their rook sort of threatens to promote, and my rook is not very active at the moment. My rook is confined by all my other pieces, but it does protect this silver. And I don't see any way that they can force a breakthrough. 
It's not as if I can force one, but I don't see how they can force one. So we have two pawns in hand. Next intentions are to start opening stuff at the head of their castle. So push both pawns, drop a pawn here, drop a pawn there. That's the intent. Whether or not we have time to bring the knight in, I don't know. All right, I misread this. Um, how do we react now? Other than sheer panic. I mean, if I take here, they take there, my silver is hanging. Um, if we do nothing, our rook hangs. If we defend the rook, they take it, we take back. We have a silver that can drop here and then harass their bishop. Um, and then they can take our gold with the bishop. I've been so excited about the possibility of getting the silver and attacking things that I've forgotten I actually have to defend things too. Um... <laughs> Well, our rook's attacked. My sil my gold here is doing nothing. My gold would be uh, well employed to help defend this, but... Okay, well... Yeah, things are going to descend into mayhem. That's okay. So we get first blood, they get the most blood. Um, it's going to sting pretty badly. Um, yeah, their promoted bishop's going to be able to attack my rook in just a second. So... Uh, this will be something. All of my pieces are loose. So I could defend this silver with a pawn. Knight takes, pawn takes, rook takes. Doesn't get me very far. I see my silver is loose. If I move it, they attack my dragon. I could defend the dragon, or they d attack my rook, rather. Um, hmm. I think this is the best I can do. I think if they take the silver, we can attempt to exchange rooks while also trying to attack their castle. It's a question of who mates first. If they promote the rook, we can consider bringing our rook out trying to cause some trouble but really on my mind is taking this knight dropping it right here seeing if I can break this open uh, 
I guess also notice if they skewer my rook and silver, the rook can move over and hit this rook. So retreating the silver is not completely a waste of a move, even if it allows this triple fork. Yeah. So our king's under attack. Um, let's condense our forces a bit. and attempt to activate my Rook. This looks crazy because you'd expect my Silver could like participate in the head of this attack, but it really can't. Um, let's see, if they move this horse somewhere, um, we could bring the Rook over. Threaten this dragon, also threaten to promote, which should be enough to get a rook exchange. More likely, they retreat this horse. And then we take this, they take back, and then we offer the rook exchange anyway. So, as planned, we're going to offer this exchange. Rook's going to trade. Then we can drop a rook somewhere over here. We didn't get the knight. It would have been nice to get the knight. But we can't get everything and also me in a position of bargaining. If they have two rooks, our position collapses. So we have to exchange rooks. So that says goodbye to our silver. But also, we have some new possibilities open, so it's not all a wash. I'm trying to think about how to attack this from the front. Uh, we could also consider defending this directly, but man, I don't like this rook. I know, the whole game I've been saying I don't like this, so we're going to deal with this. And it'll cost us a silver and a knight and a lance to do this business, but I guess that's the cost of business. If, for some insane reason, they move the dragon instead of doing this exchange, uh, we just promote. Or we take the knight, even. No, we promote. And let the silver go. Because we need an attack. Mm, I don't know. Taking the knight actually looks better. Because our dragon's not that great, and a knight here would be pretty awesome. So... Yeah, taking the knight is probably what we do if they move away. But, like, surely they will take this and we'll take back. Yeah. And then after that, this is where I want to drop the rook. Like, this came to mind, this came to mind. But this is too close because they could just move a gold back. So we're going to take here... They might attack our bishop. We might move it. Um, most likely they just take here and we drop the rook right here. Well, that opens a fork. I don't know. We drop the rook somewhere. It, it'll prove useful. We've dropped the rook from a distance where it's best equipped to deal damage.
That's just a question of do we use the first rank, which probably yes, or do we use the second rank if we thought we had some breakthrough combination that would split this open. But probably the first rank is the right place. And probably we need to threaten a lance or a knight or something. There's not a need for this aggression. I don't understand it. I mean, I get it to some extent, but that's really aggressive. This intends a gold drop next. Um... What the heck? That's too close that's to my castle. Deal. I get their interest in a gold drop, but um, yeah, go ahead, promote it. We've defended our bishop, started to rebuild the castle. Uh, and stopped this gold drop directly forking our gold and bishop. So they promote. Promoted pieces are scary, but um, we shouldn't let that be the only consideration in a position. So I very much wanted this knight so I could drop it right there. I'm going to get the knight. It's going to be powerful. Um, I have to promote the silver, don't I? Yeah, let's promote it. Otherwise, they could, like, harass this pretty easily. So, yeah, we have to promote the silver, which enables this knight drop. We can consider Rook Drops on the first or second ranks. It would have been very nice to have a Rook Drop on the first rank threatening a Silver Drop here, but that was not in the cards. So we play the cards that we got. Those cards say that this Knight drops a huge threat. They're going to do a Pawn Drop to stop it. And we'll play from there. We could also do night drop over here, but it doesn't mate. Rather, it doesn't even disturb the castle. Well, I mean, it slightly disturbs it. The gold did have to move somewhere, but there's no convincing follow-up after that night drop. So most likely I'm looking at rook drop here if they stop my night drop. But I could be looking at a rook drop here-ish. Yeah. Okay, not on my radar. Oh boy. Well, buckle up. Um, that's a free move for me. Uh, yeah. I'm not afraid of exchanging my bishop for a lesser piece. 
just not a pawn. So yeah, now we've got a knight drop on the very frontier of this castle. That would be fun. Um, I don't think that's what they had in mind, but that's where we're at. I just wish this like silver were something else and this knight drop and a rook drop mated. That'd be some kind of justice. Yeah, our promoted silver combined with our bishop, rook, and knight should make something of an interesting attack here. Ah, this was their intent. Okay. That makes some sense. Um, that's amazing. That is so bold. That is extremely bold. Alright, we'll take this. Sure. I assume they have a plan. But, um, yeah, that's super bold unless I'm missing something. Um... Hmm. Subtle. Super subtle. But, yeah. Um, we don't need to be subtle. We just need to find good moves. When we find good moves... Finding subtle moves is optional. That's bold, too. Oh, man. We are doing all the bold moves today. Um, okay. I think uh, at this point we declare victory. Seems like a good thing to do. Um...
30秒I'm just trying to be super careful to make sure I've read this correctly. Um, I know I exhibited confidence one turn ago, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I did read this right. Um, Thanks for the game. Whoo boy, that was exciting for a Friday. That's exciting for any day of the week. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we got a healthy rivalry going here. Ain't that the truth. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, Rift Takes Pawn was one of those things I was looking closely at there. Whew. <laughs> Yeah, this game definitely had a lot of escalation. Um, so. Uh, what to do here, I wonder. <laughs> yeah, that gold drop might not have been right. I don't know. Yeah, so we have to back up quite a bit to understand just what happened this game. <laughs> um. Because a lot of things happened. Uh, so, yeah, because this is not like a teaching ladder game, we can analyze the starting wherever we feel most interested in starting the analysis. And, yeah, somewhere around here seems right. Um, so, that's interesting. Um, yeah, this, this got complicated quickly. I'm not sure I have any quick answers to any. We'll figure things out together. It, I'm just trying to be a little cautious during this post-game analysis, given what we know now. Like, this whole time, um, yeah, there was this kind of stuff. Which, actually, that probably is best. Because the more I think about this... Yeah, this is possible, but... Um, I wonder, maybe... Maybe this instead. I don't know. Silver drop. Get a similar sort of thing as to what happened the previous game, except this time my king could actually run a little bit. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure if the bishop sack or the horse sack works. Yeah, this is what I've been trying to figure out here. So I still have some generals on that side of the board. It's unfortunate to have placed the gold because that's the one we could have used for to set a mate trap if there were one. But yeah, we have to place the gold to defend our king. And it's not the clearest position ever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting opening, for sure. 
So I decided to come hell or high water. I don't want to play third foul rook this game. We're going to play central foul rook, even if it causes terrible things to happen. So, yeah. Yes, that was my idea is to exchange rooks. And then we got this exchange. Yeah, this um, is crushing. It's kind of amazing, this compared to the other day, where just, like, my attack never got off the ground. This time I actually saw it through. But, um, yeah, I was paying attention both on offense and defense. Um... Yes, I did this to prevent, um, uh, yeah, so this rook drop is clearly intending to, like, break open my castle, but here, okay, say they had attacked this directly, um, I think this is still my plan, and I still want to play this, um, yeah. I could be just grossly underestimating how strong their attack is. Maybe. I'm not sure. Maybe if I need to defend, I could drop a pawn instead, but I don't know. Um, that's if I need to defend, we would consider that. But, um, yeah, so yeah, maybe this here. So they've led their attack with the... I mean, they have two heavy pieces attacking. So I do need to take this attack somewhat seriously. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what I gain by dropping this, other than it seems to put their rook slightly distant from my king. It doesn't help me attack at all, so generally trying to defend would not be best, but here, like, my castle is rather, I don't know, sad. Um, yes, they could take here. Uh, right, so night drop is still my intent. And I don't honestly know where we end up, but this is kind of what I was shooting for. Yeah, we could use the rook, I suppose. Ah, uh, that's interesting. Oh, am I safe here? That's strange. Well, hang on. Oh, maybe it's fine. But, I mean, I had this, right? Yeah, simply running your right is good enough here.
So yeah, I guess actually the Rook Drop is stronger than the Knight Drop. Because there's a mate threat. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, this here. Um, yeah, just taking the silver probably simplifies everything here. And I wasn't totally sure what to do here. Oh, on 59, they're saying. Let's see. I don't see 59. Oh, this. Taking this silver. Um, hmm. I didn't think that would happen. I think it's possible. Um, is my king in enough danger that this makes sense? Okay, gold drop. It does hit my bishop. Um, what to do? That's interesting. Oh, that seems reasonable. Yeah. So they were... Uh, Alexei had been looking at a silver drop on the square. Um... Oh! Oh, that... Wow. That... stings. <laughs> oh, that is painful. Oh no. Wow. Okay. Wow, so I bluffed my opponent apparently. Not on purpose, but yeah, that looks scary. Now, I mean, yes, taking the horse makes a lot of sense. Um but, yeah, given the circumstances, maybe taking the horse isn't even best. Just like, this seems to hurt a lot. Um, so I'm going to back us up one move at a time here. So, like, here. And there we go. So, yeah, we got a threat here and a threat there. Yeah, so let's say likes this idea. Seems reasonable. Um, Okay, if they attack this, um, I guess we still take here. Okay. Um, and what am I overlooking? Oh, silver, 6-1. Uh, or 61. Oh. Hmm. I guess this here? Yeah. Okay, that seems plausible. Um. Um. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. What's going on? Hmm. 
Like, I have no fear, but that's just because I don't understand the position. I'm sure if I had a good understanding, I would be frightened. I just, like, don't understand Shogi well enough to know what's frightening about this. Um, but yeah. Yeah, this seems a bit iffy the more I look at it. Um, hmm. It's an interesting drop. It's very fast. I don't know how good I can be at reading it, but it seems quite fast here compared to like anything else I can think of. Um, hmm. does that mean I have to try something crazy like this instead? Maybe. Six one silver anyway. All right, we could try that. Uh. Yes, yeah, so we're fighting on... Uh, like, I don't know that I can read this better than an engine could. Like, an engine will give us some kind of analysis of this position that doesn't have my analysis errors in it. Uh, But yeah, I'm playing without fear because I don't know what else to try here. Um, yeah, I don't know how to evaluate this. Yeah, looks like Senta looks better. It's so close, but it's nothing. Yeah, if we don't have the checkmate, then there's just nothing to go for here. So the fact that I had to protect this bishop cost me a valuable turn. And that's why this castle collapses. Um, there's really nothing to do to improve upon that. Um, I mean, maybe this? I don't know. So this protects the bishop. 
But I don't like this because it's so close to this castle. Yeah. So, I don't know. Something like this, maybe? There might still be some game to be played here. Oh, 6 1 silver again. Wow. Okay, yeah, my attack sucks. That's impressive. Uh. Okay, yeah. So we actually have to do something about that. Fine. Six one silver is now stopped for a turn, but like they're just gonna drop it a little further away and then do the same thing a turn later. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, apparently my position's just worse if I don't succeed in bluffing them. Uh, oh, that's powerful too because of this fork threat. So... Hmm. Although my bishop is defended this time. Hmm. Yeah, there's no surviving this. Not even specifically here, but even back at the head of the variation. So even with the rook exchange, that doesn't seem to solve my woes. So, yeah. So this move here, yeah, this seems to not work. So I guess we'll hand back the hat, because I don't really know what else to look at. Because, yeah, that taking the silver uh, ends up giving them exactly the piece they need and all these variations to mate me. So, um, yeah, I don't really know what else to look at there. Other than, um, yeah, Alexei very helpfully points out that we are super duper mated in this line. So, it did that out of desperation. It looked right, but evidently it just isn't. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it is Friday. It's fine if they're busy. I'll probably be busy in a little bit. Um, yeah, if they have to go, I might spend a little more time analyzing, but either way, this game just escalated, and this double blunder of me attacking their horse and them not taking my silver seems to have decided the game in my favor. It's not that I'm trying to set traps or anything, it's just that, like, a more violent style seems to be something I'm better with. So, yeah, that makes two games played out of this best of three. We are now even, so um, that means we'll have to schedule another game. Hooray! It's just what everyone wanted. <laughs> All right. Uh... Yeah, so let's getting it played on the weekend will probably be better. Yeah, and I think tomorrow I'm open. As far as I know, so far it, it could change, but so far I think I am open to play it tomorrow. So we'll see if we can get that played. Um, yeah, generally my Saturday tends to be more open than my Sunday, but it varies.
So yeah, that were this is I think there were like thirteen participants. Yeah. Um So out of 13 participants, we had this, uh, oh, sorry, they have more comments. We'll zoom in again. Um, unfortunately, our highest rated player uh, either made a mind slip, finger slip, or mouse slip. Yeah. Um, so whatever the case, our highest rated player, Lily, uh, lost one game in the knockout section of this tournament, uh, to our current opponent, Foradun. So this is why we're paired with Foradun rather than Lily Lion main. But, uh, yeah, um, the finals is a best of three rather than a simple knockout. Um, so I think, yeah, after this point, once we finally got our very desired Rook Exchange, I did mention this surprised me, because, yes, clearly they're intending to drop pieces near my castle. This Rook drop is a bit too close to my castle, so I saw this gold drop idea, and I said, no, 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 none of that. I might have also been able to drop a pawn or something to protect against some of this, but... This gained a tempo, and then this gained the knight. This pawn drop looks scary at first, um, but yeah, this bishop attacking the one point, this ended up being the weakness of the castle, surprisingly. Um, so we took a gold general because it's just the piece we need. And now we're threatening the pawn, as well as threatening mate in one. Uh, at this point, I expected them to either drop the silver in protection of the king, or more likely bring this gold back to stop the mate, which uh, admittedly does not solve everything. Let's take a quick look at what our comments are. Uh, yeah, thanks, Alexei. Yeah, he says we are welcome. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, we'll have a good game tomorrow. Uh, yeah, that'll be good fun. This All-American Summer Shogi, since it was knocked out in the main section, um, I forget, if we had 13 players, that, I think that took three rounds for us to advance to the finals. Um, amazingly, the way the player pool was split up, it was uh, easier than normal to get through for me. So I had expected to get eliminated before then. Yes, after this, this is just mate. So that was an unfortunate gold move, but hey, we found the mate in the end. So hooray to me. Um, even after this sacrifice, like what I had been looking at was this kind of retreat, which... Uh, oh, actually this doesn't do anything because the mate in one... Oh, well, that's not mate in one. That's not at all mate in one. Uh, this gold drop here is not mate in one. So yeah, here... I mean, yes, I'm clearly ahead on material and can win at my leisure. I could even take the pawn if I need to, but um, yeah, so... Yeah, I was thinking they'd probably retreat this, or probably drop this here. Which, admittedly, like, shuts down their attack, right? I've been thinking, well gosh, if they start doing stuff like this, how am I going to refuel this attack? Um, I'm hitting the head here, and trying to also... Now the new base of the castle would be the silver, right? So I'd need something to attack. I've been thinking, well, I could drop this to harass the silver. 
and I've been starting to reason about, well, okay, they might come up with some attack on this side of the board. And I've been starting to think about this sort of stuff. Um, but, yeah, they played the most aggressive thing and got punished for it. So, all's well that ends well. Um, here, the other thing to note is that if the king attempts to run, um, our dragon defends the center pawn. So we can simply mate. Wait, no, I'm sorry, that's not it. That's not it. This is the other thing I was starting to evaluate at the end of the game. Um, was, uh, do I have a checkmate here? I believed that I did, but I was starting to have second thoughts. Um, so the most forcing line would be something like this. This prevents the king from further advancement. And then... Um, something like that. Sandwiching the king between the gold and the dragon. Um, with the idea of this drop. So they could bring the king over. Um, we could bring the dragon over to, again, prevent the king from running too far. If they block, again, we have a gold drop mate, so they'd run again. Um, and yeah, worst case, we have a knight drop here. Oh, wait. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah, this running the king doesn't save it. Dropping doesn't save it either. So... Yeah, interesting sandwiches arise from here. But if not for this gold drop, um, yeah, this king is actually threatening to run. So we need to play correctly in this position. But uh, we didn't end up there. Instead, we this is where uh, our game concludes. That was an adventure. That was the roller coaster. Um... Yeah, I resolved to play this opening, um, regardless of what they did, and it ended up working out in the end, but we just got lucky, as we usually do. Um, I guess the more thematic thing to try here would be, instead of forcing a pawn exchange, breaking open my castle, which is questionable, um, yeah, again, building... Kimaramino is probably more reasonable. Um, delaying this conflict and not splitting my castle on the third file. Because I tend to get crushed when that happens, when my castle is permeable. So, yeah, it's sad that both of our bishops are blocked, but... Um, it's an interesting position. I don't know how to evaluate this, but yeah. Instead, I played this... Oh, also that bishop move is very aggressive. That bishop move is too aggressive. This is probably better. Again, with the idea of just building something toward the center. Um, maybe bringing a knight in. Understanding they'll do this. They'll bring the bishop out, the knight out, and they'll be shooting at my king. But it's fine. Putting the bishop behind a pawn is not a reason to panic. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate that like their pawn... Oh, I'm sorry, we both have a vanguard pawn, so... Mine's never going anywhere. Theirs might be able to go somewhere, but probably not. I don't know how best to destroy this shape, but it doesn't extend an influence over this corner, and it has very little influence anywhere else, so it's... Very compact, not easily moved. I guess we found a weakness in the game, but um, yeah, this bishop advancement was too greedy, and they correctly pounce on this, just playing a normal attack. Like, this is super obvious stuff. I've been thinking, well, gosh, I could push this pawn and hit their bishop, but then I'm really asking for it, so yeah, that was not smart. Um, alternately, my bishop could retreat. I don't 
think that works out very well because they're threatening this. So retreating back the other direction, yeah, just loses our center pawn. So they, yeah, this bishop advance was stupid. Um, I need to like push this or this or something. Um, so yeah, I invited an attack and accidentally lived to tell the tale. So hooray me. None of my just uh, none of my tactical ideas worked. Yeah, I was trying to find time for pushing these, and just the time never was there. Um, would have been really nice to push those. So, Alexei showed during the game some combinations. Yeah, I don't really know what to do. Um, this is one idea I had, but then I'm just down a uh, general. I'm down a gold general here. Um, but they might also just be able to take this too. So maybe they take here. I It seems I have to retake, otherwise my bishop drops. And then either they can take here or there. Probably taking this. And I'm again down a piece. But with some ideas. I think they're still better. But yeah, then we get all the Alexian's analysis, which is excellent. And this is how our game concludes. So, quite a game. Quite a post-game analysis. And we'll be hoping to repeat tomorrow. Except, obviously not trying to aim for traps. Trying to just play the best we can. And see where that ends up. Thanks for watching.